So you're going to have an online web conference. Good for you for giving yourself the opportunity to extend your audience from the comfort of your home or office. But the question that always comes up is, how do I know if people on the other end are listening? That's a perfectly logical question to ask, but there's actually another question you should ask before that one. How do I get the people on the other end to listen? Now, I don't mean to infer that your oratory skills leave anything to be desired. But in an online presentation, you need tools to engage the audience, ways to get them to participate and pay attention. Otherwise, they could get distracted by things in their environment. Therefore, one of the first things you should pay attention to when you're looking for a web conferencing solution is, what kind of engagement tools does that solution make available? The second thing is, how will the solution help you measure or quantify engagement? So today, I'm going to tell you all about Adobe Connect and its suite of engagement tools. There are two different scenarios which require engagement in a web conference environment, the webinar and the classroom. As I talk about the engagement tools we have in Connect, I'll be switching between these two methodologies in a pretty freeform way. It's up to you to identify which of these features apply to the way you'll use the tool. Chat is probably the most universal engagement tool since it's available across practically every web conferencing solution. When people are chatting, they're engaged. Well, that is, unless they're chatting about something that's entirely irrelevant to the subject that you want them to focus on. Yep, chat is a free-for-all. By its very nature, it resists direction and structure. Fortunately, Adobe Connect allows you to use your chat pods in a way that channels the conversation. Look at this example. By creating two chat pods side by side and giving each one a title that suggests the topic, we give direction to the comments being made here. This brings up a very important point about engagement. Many people are not accustomed to attending online presentations, and it may not be obvious to them what you want them to do when they see these chat pods laid out like this. Here, we've included a notepad with instructions, and that can be very helpful. But you may be surprised, or maybe you won't, how many people don't really read the instructions. So in order to prompt attendee engagement, it's important that you, the host or presenter, tell them exactly what they need to do. Then rephrase your instructions and tell them again. It may seem like overkill to repeat instructions every time, but in the end, you'll find you have less confusion and more participation from your attendees. Another way we could accomplish this same functionality in Adobe Connect is with the short answer poll pod. This would behave a little differently than the chat pods in that the poll pod is limited to one answer per question. The attendee can continue to modify their answer until the poll is ended by the host, but they'll only be allowed one final answer as opposed to the multiple entries they can make in a chat pod. Also, the participants don't get to see who made the comments in the poll pod. Another great use of the chat or short answer poll pod is in the lobby. You know, that environment the attendees land in before the presentation actually begins. This gets your attendees used to the idea of participating even before the session starts. You can ask questions like, where are you joining from? How did you hear about this event? What subjects would you like us to talk about in our future events? or anything that you think will prompt the attendees to participate. Other types of poll questions are also great to use in the lobby, interspersed throughout your session, or at the end of your presentation as a final survey. Interspersing poll questions in your presentation keeps your audience thinking about and analyzing your information instead of drifting off to the sound of your voice. Adobe Connect has multiple choice, single answer poll questions, and multiple answer questions, as well as the short answer poll question we saw earlier. With any of the poll pods in Connect, you can share the results with the audience either during the poll or after, which can also serve to pique the attendee's interest. It's typically a good practice to have some way for attendees to ask questions during or after the presentation. But as we've already stated, the chat pod can be problematic with larger groups because of its wide open nature. For this, Adobe Connect gives us the Q&A pod. This pod allows attendees to ask questions, but these go directly to the hosts and presenters. Other participants don't see the questions at all. A presenter or host can then choose to respond to the question in such a way that the response is sent privately to the submitter or 
posted publicly for all attendees to read. A great use of the Q&A pod is to have a question and answer period before ending the meeting to clear up any confusion or ambiguities that might exist for your attendees. Another way to engage attendees is to encourage them to change their status. In Adobe Connect, there's a menu at the top of the meeting room with several status choices, raise hand, agree, disagree, etc. Also in the attendees pod, there's a view that allows you to see how many people have selected each status setting. So if you want to do a quick verbal poll, for example, how many of you have attended our webinars before? Set your status to agree if you have or disagree if you haven't. The results will be easily and quickly visible in the status view of the attendees pod. Another way to get attendees engaged is to ask them to collaborate with you on the whiteboard. You can start out by drawing a diagram or shapes or math problems on the whiteboard and then ask one of your attendees to participate in some way, perhaps finishing what you started. You can also bring up an image in a share pod and use the whiteboard overlay to have attendees draw over the image. By the way, this also works with slides and even videos. Adobe Connect makes it really easy to give someone the right to use the whiteboard tools without allowing them to do other things that you don't want them to do. In the attendees pod, select one or more of the attendees, go to the options menu, select attendee options, and then enhanced participant rights in the pop-out menu. Then in this dialog box, just check whiteboard. Now they can use the whiteboard tools when you turn them on. And here's a tip. If you like this kind of whiteboard activity but find using a mouse too difficult, try having the meeting room open on an iPad or Android tablet and use a stylus. This can really make your freehand markup much easier to accomplish, and it looks better too. When we were in school, in nearly every class, there were papers being passed out, right? Now that I think about it, the amount of paper distribution in schools probably accounts for half of our deforestation problems. Anyway, Sometimes we need to distribute information for our attendees to have on their local systems during the presentation or for later consumption. In a web conference, that means digital files. Adobe Connect gives us the file share pod for this. The presenter or host can upload any kind of file and the participants can download those files. Downloading files is a form of engagement. Another way to distribute information for attendees to use locally is to direct the student to a web page or online resource. This can be done via the web links pod. You just configure your web links beforehand and the attendees can browse to them by simply selecting one and clicking the browse to button. If you're doing virtual training, you may also want to take advantage of Adobe Connect's breakout room feature. Break your students into smaller groups with instructions to achieve a specific purpose during the breakout period. Let them brainstorm, problem solve, collaborate and work together. You can even visit the breakout rooms and observe or even help them. This is a fantastic way to engage your students. Adobe Connect gives you the engagement dashboard so that you can measure engagement during the meeting. Here we see an overall engagement indicator as well as engagement numbers for Q&A and polls. If you're using Adobe Connect events, there are even reports you can access after the session to see the engagement numbers for your session. For example, this graph shows when our attendees were most engaged. There are charts for chat participation, Q&A participation, file downloads, poll participation, and status selection. Can your web conferencing solution do all this? Unless you're using Adobe Connect, I seriously doubt it. There are a couple of additional items I'll mention before finishing up. If you're sure all of your participants are attending via a PC and not on a mobile device, you can use Connect extensions to enhance their engagement. Extensions are like little apps that work inside your Connect meeting room. Here's an example that you might want to use in your lobby, a map that lets your attendees point out where they are in the world. Here's another one that lets you build surveys to include in your meeting. There are even games that you can bring into your meeting to entertain and engage your attendees. No question about it. When it comes to engaging your audience, Adobe Connect provides the most robust set of tools available for virtual conferences. If you have any questions about Adobe Connect, please use the information on the screen to contact me. Until next time, this is your Connect Guru signing off.